Okay, welcome back. We continue with the Fitch style proofs packet by working through some more difficult proofs. Uh, here's proof number 24. This is another one of the De Morgan's laws. And okay, uh, really what we're doing is sort of two proofs at once. We're showing that um, from uh, not uh, P or Q, uh, we can conclude not P and not Q. Um, but uh, also, of course, this works uh, in the other direction. And so really, it's not uh, any longer a um, particular logical argument that we're showing is valid, but instead, uh, we're showing uh, sort of the logical equivalent of these two expressions. And, well, uh, for that, uh, we have the biconditional. So perhaps the best thing to do is to just simply uh, state what it is that we're trying to do. Maybe that's uh, the most clear. Uh, we're trying to show that uh, not P or Q, if and only if, not P and not Q, that that is a tautology. Okay, uh, let's go. How are we going to, to do this? Well, we're going to do this um, by, uh, well, assuming nothing, and then uh, proving this, this biconditional. How do you uh, prove a biconditional? Well, for that you need biconditional introduction. And basically, a biconditional is really just like a conditional that's pointing in both directions, and so the rule to prove a biconditional is you just uh, assume the left, derive the right, assume the right, derive the left, and then just assert the biconditional. So this is really, properly speaking, like two separate proofs, um, and I'm going to just treat them like two totally separate proofs. In other words, uh, writing kind of big, I will assume in line one, uh, not uh, P or Q, and okay, my board is not infinite, so I have to uh, do this in, uh, in, in sort of um, two columns, uh, kind, of, kind of breaking the, the geometry of the proof a little bit. But uh, anyway, I'm going to assume that, and then down here, I'm going to get not P uh, and not Q again, modeling good uh, thinking behavior here by uh, working from the outside in. And then, um, and here I kind of, you know, go to my next column or whatever. Uh, this is going to be a little tight, I think. Uh, that's, the, that's the kind of main bar. I mean, uh, let's see, how much effort do we want to put into this? I'll put a star there and a star here to indicate that that, that, that column is supposed to continue like that. And then, uh, okay, I don't know what line number it's going to be exactly, but I am going to then do a sort of a separate proof that um, not P and not Q uh, yield uh, not uh, P or Q. And then I will assert down here in this final line the thing I'm trying to prove uh, which is not P and, or Q, sorry, uh, if and only if, not P and not Q. Okay, uh, and the reason for this will be by conditional intro. Okay, I think I'm going to have to write pretty small. Um, so, alright, let's go. This is, this is ultimately we did uh, two, if you think of the De Morgan's Laws as being really four proofs. Uh, we did two of them already, proof 14 and 15. Uh, and um, these are sort of the other two, and, and neither of these is, is as hard as 14 was. Okay, let's begin. Uh, I think um, both of these are basically just straightforward. How am I going to get from here to here? Eyes uh, on the prize, on the thing that I'm trying to prove. The thing I'm trying to prove is this conjunction. How do I prove a conjunction? Well, I just prove not P, I prove not Q, and I add them together. How am I going to prove not P? Well, there's just basically one good way to prove uh, a negation, that is you assume P and you get a contradiction. And so like the logic is just telling me exactly what to do. What I need to do is assume P and okay, and now I'm just done, right? Now the rest is just is just toil because I've already figured out exactly what's going on. I assume P, I OR on Q, that's OR intro uh, to, then I AND that line together with my line one, uh, this is going to be a challenge, I see. Uh, that's uh, and intro um, one and three. Uh, one and three. Um, a challenge to fit this all in, I mean. Uh, horizontally. Uh, well, that's something of the form x and not x. 
So that is a contradiction. Reason bottom intro uh, four. And now I got exactly what I wanted out of this. I assumed P, I got a bottom, uh, therefore not P, reason, negation, intro, uh, two through five. All right, and now, um, of course, the proof is completely symmetrical, so I just do that all again. Uh, line seven, I assume Q. Line eight, I or on a P. Line nine, I and that sentence together with line one. Uh, hopefully I'm not writing so small that you can't see what's happening. Well, anyway, uh, then that is a bottom, uh, and therefore I conclude not Q, and then here in line 12 I end them both together. So, all right, hopefully this flowed pretty easily for, for you as well. Um, this is or intro seven, uh, and uh, intro eight, and um, a one. Uh, this is a bottom intro nine. This is a negation intro uh, a seven through ten. And finally, we have an and intro uh, six and eleven. Ta-da! Okay, uh, so that's sort of the first half, and uh, the second half I think is is not much more difficult, uh, to be honest. Uh, I now have to get from, from here to here. Okay, so this is now line 13. Uh, how am I going to get uh, not uh, P or Q? Well, there's one good way to prove negation, once again, is to assume uh, P or Q and, and show that that leads to a contradiction. So, uh, okay. This is P or Q, and how am I going to get a contradiction out of that? Well, I have now two lines, uh, so I have sort of two chances to, to get this uh, contradiction, or, or rather I have two lines from which together I need to, to show that they lead to a bottom. And uh, all right, the first one is just calling out, uh, I have not P and I also have not Q. The second line is a disjunction, and to squeeze information out of the disjunction, we need to do a proof by contradiction. So I think the easiest way is probably to just do that proof by contradiction, uh, proof by cases, I mean, right now. So in other words, I will uh, begin my, my proof by cases with line 14. Line 14 says, either P or Q is true, so suppose P. Well, no, because from line 13 I get not P, and that's a P and not P situation, and that is a bottom. And then on the other hand, uh, I have, I, uh, it's possible that Q is true, but that's also problematic because uh, from line 13 I get not Q, and that's Q and not Q, uh, and, and that's a bottom. And therefore, the conclusion of my proof by cases is bottom, uh, and therefore I get the contradiction I want. Alright, so I just did that kind of really fast, um, but I do think it's really sort of not that hard. Uh, notice a couple of sort of slightly interesting features here, which is on the one that, uh, that okay, well, let me just notate this because I should. Uh, where did this come from? This came from and elim 13. Now, notice that I, uh, I was entitled to state not P sort of out uh, in the main body of the proof. Um, there was an opportunity in between lines 13 and 14 before beginning that subproof to state not P. And perhaps from some sort of elegance perspective, you feel that not P should be sort of extracted, you know, back at the main body. Uh, I'm, entitled, I'm entitled to this statement not P uh, back, uh, just immediately under line 13. That's true, um, but if I wrote it underneath line 13, this not P, I would just have to reiterate it now. Um, actually, I, no, I take it back, I wouldn't have to reiterate it now. Um, so maybe that actually would have been more elegant, or in, in some sense. Uh, to decompose that and, you know, back at the main bar. But in the end, it doesn't matter. Uh, I used it here because it was here that I needed it. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, and in 13, then this is and intro uh, 15 and 16, bottom intro uh, 17. And once again, notice how the, the sort of function of this bottom intro rule is to convert any generic contradiction uh, of the form x and not x 
you know, into a, a, a sort of single symbol bottom, um, because uh, what's nice about that is that now when I do my my subproof in 19 to 22, where do I get this? Where do I get this not Q from? Okay, and elim uh, 13 uh, and intro 19 and 20 and bottom intro 21. Well, now uh, these two sort of sort of different contradictions have been kind of converted into a single contradiction. So now in line 23, I can say, oh, I really did get the exact same thing in both cases. And that's actually just has what has happened here. What has happened here is a proof by cases. So that's an or elimination. The disjunction that I eliminated was, was line 14, and I eliminated it via this 15 through 18, 19 through 22 pair of subproofs. Uh, okay, well, I assumed something in line 14, it led to a bottom, so I uh, introduce uh, a negation now, uh, 14 through 23, and then the only new thing is happening right now, which is um, when I go to state my final answer, which is this biconditional, I cite just the line numbers of the two halves of the proof. So this is 1 through 12, and 13 through 24, 13 through 24. Sorry, a little bit uh, smushed there, but I think that's probably, hopefully, still pretty clear. Okay, that was proof 24. We're going to do, like, I don't know, six more or something. Let's go. They do get a little bit harder, but, um, you know, once you get good, you just, you just get so good that, um, well, okay. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go. 25. Proof 25 uh, says, uh, prove the blah, 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 from no premises. Okay, uh, all right, we'll just write the thing that I'm trying to prove. It is, and okay, feel free to, you know, switch to brackets uh, when you ever you want to, and I want to now. A arrow, B arrow, C, if and only if um, A and B arrow C. A and B uh, arrow C. It's actually kind of deep in some sort of way. It says that there's really no difference between saying uh, that two things imply another thing versus saying that if A, then additionally, if B, then C. I don't know. Okay, uh, let's go. Um, well, we'll just do it. Here, I think I can fit it in just one line, because uh, it's pretty short. So, line, so the first thing I do is start an argument with no premises. And, okay, I want A uh, arrow, uh, B arrow C is my assumption. And then, okay, I think I can, in fact, fit this. So, uh, I'm hoping that I can get down here A and B uh, arrow C. And then what I plan to do is immediately turn around and assume A and B arrow C, and down here get uh, A arrow B arrow C. Okay, so this is the working outside in uh, thing, which is why I think it is valuable actually to, to be doing these by hand and uh, maybe not using that website. I don't know, pros and cons. Um, but uh, I'll just write this. Uh, a and B arrow C. Okay. Cha cha cha. All right. Oh, well, let's go. Uh, here I am. I have a conditional, but more importantly, I'm trying to prove a conditional. Well, there's only really one good way to prove a conditional. Assume the antecedent and derive the consequent. And so this proof just, just writes itself, right? In line two, I am going to assume A and B. Cha 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 cha. And somehow I'm going to get C. Well, how am I going to get that? It's pretty clear how 1 and 2 can be combined together to get information, because uh, I can just drag an A out of line 2. So that's and elim uh, 2. Uh, but then uh, 3 and 1 together help me sort of discharge this assumption. Is it, Well, no, people don't say that. Well, there's some word people use that, but OK, it's just modus ponens. So this is B arrow C, reason arrow elim. Uh, one, three. Uh, if A, then, 
BRC? Well, I have A, so therefore BRC. But then also now I have this conditional in line four, but I also have B by N elim two, uh, and then immediately I can get C by arrow elim four and five. All right, that was pretty straightforward. Uh, what just happened? I assumed something in line two. Uh, I concluded something in line six. Therefore, arrow intro uh, two through six. Uh, because the thing I, I, I'm proving here is, a, is itself a conditional. So, okay, good. Uh, well, then I just turn around right away and go for line uh, eight. Uh, what's happening in line 8? I need to show how this goes to this. Well now, I mean, you really have to uh, train yourself to uh, sort of ignore what you know and focus on what you're trying to prove. What am I trying to prove? I'm trying to prove a conditional. The antecedent of that conditional is A, and the consequent is B, A, or C. So sort of almost automatically, I will assume in line 9, A, and I will try to conclude down here, B, A, or C. And now, once again, the proof writes itself. What am I trying to prove? I'm trying to prove BRC. But if I'm trying to prove BRC, there's only one good way to do that, and that is to once again assume B and get C. And so now all I need to do is fill in the details. And well, here the details are just done because I have A and B and line 8. Well, it's clear that now I can just put A and B together uh, and intro 910. Uh, and uh, together with line 8, that just gives me uh, C by arrow elim, uh, otherwise known as modus ponens, uh, 8, uh, 11. Cha cha. Uh, well, uh, great. I assumed B and got C. Therefore, I am entitled by arrow intro uh, 10 through 12 to state uh, B arrow C. But at the same time, I assumed A and line 9 and arrived at B arrow C. Thus, I'm entitled by arrow intro 9 through 13 uh, to state that if A, then B, A, or C. And now, in line 15, the proof is done uh, by by conditional intro 1 through 7, 8 through 14. I've shown that I can get from one to the other. Uh, okay, good. Good. Uh, proof 26. Um, I'll squeeze in over here because it's, it's quite small. Uh, this is another sort of famous um, a valid argument that uh, people made a big deal about once upon a time that you would, that you would sort of uh, study carefully if you were learning logic um, 800 years ago. And it states that if P implies Q and Q implies R, then P implies R. And okay, uh, we can easily show that this argument is valid by uh, proving this from those, and this is just really a couple lines, right? Um, I don't know what exactly this is doing at this exact moment in this packet, um, but anyway, here it is. Uh, I, assume I assume P, R, Q, and Q, R, R. What am I trying to prove? I'm trying to prove P, R, R. And so I hope to assume P and get R, but I'm just going to get that right away. Because P together with 1 will give me Q, arrow elim, uh, 1, 3. Yeah. And then uh, Q together with line 2 will just give me R. So this is arrow elim 4 and 2. And, well, sure enough, I just uh, proved uh, if P then R. Reason arrow intro three through five. Okay, uh, good. Uh, what else is left in this packet? I guess I'm gonna do maybe I don't know how many more. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight. I can't remember how many I assigned for homework. I think I said go through twenty-nine. So I guess I'll I guess I'll do that. So twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. That'll be it. Um, Gotta make this video kind of pop a little bit more. Just gonna make sure that that actually is what I signed. Yeah. 24 through 29. All right. Woo! We do it. Mm. Um, and uh, hey, uh, you know, for my own class and for anyone watching at home, um, if you uh, type 
you know, Fitch style proof into Google, um, then I am in fact the three videos, the only three videos I made on this topic prior to this one, uh, are in fact the three top videos uh, on all of the internet in the English speaking world. That might just be because I'm the only one that calls them Fitch style proofs, uh, or it might be because um, I am the best. All right, proof 27. Oh, this one is like, I'm almost tempted to just kind of not do this one. This one is a just practice problem in the sense that it involves no new ideas. It is not a famous classical argument uh, or anything. It's just, hey, can you just like do one on your own now? I guess I'll just do it. Uh, here we go. This is, this is the proof. The proof is you just get a lot of premises. Uh, here's one of them. A or B. maybe this is one of the hardest ones actually, because you have to kind of think for yourself. And there are there are really long ways to do this. And actually, I'm not convinced that what I'm about to do is necessarily the shortest either. Um, but I'll I'll show you what I did, and then I'll be embarrassed later if there's like a significantly shorter proof uh, than this. Uh, okay, here it is, and I would like to show. And all of this leads to C and D. Okay, why? Well, uh, all right. Uh, well, proving C and D really just means proving C and proving D and ordering them together. So let's try to investigate why C and D should be true. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I know uh, not A. So. Right away, I can tell you that line one tells me that either A is true or B or C is true. Well, it's going to be B or C. Uh, and once I know B or C, um, have I done this correctly? No. There we go. There we go. Uh, yeah. Once I know B and C, because because A is false. Uh, well, now that I know uh, B. Uh, I can get to D or E, but of course E is false, so in fact it has to be D, and also C. Alright, so, uh, really that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, okay, I'll just go in that order right there, the order I thought of it. I mean, even if this isn't the shortest proof, it's still the one that most matches my natural thinking. This is natural deduction, so, uh, we go. I shall establish a B and C. Why must B and C be true? Because if it weren't, I would have a problem. So I shall assume, uh, let's see, uh, I guess I'll assume, I think this is the easiest way. Um, cha 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 cha. I don't know. Um, I'll assume that B and C is false. And I'll show that that leads to a contradiction. And, well, okay, writing very small now, I'll do a proof by cases on line one. Line one says, on the one hand, A, but of course, that's just not true, because line four gives me A and not A, and intro uh, six and four. Uh, but that is a bottom, uh, and maybe I'll notate later, or not at all. That's a bottom, uh, so that's just no A. But then, on the other hand, uh, what's my alternative? My alternative is B and C, yet I have assumed in line 5 that uh, B and C is false. So, there we have it. Um, both cases of this proof by cases led to a bottom, and then that means uh, that, that we have a bottom because both cases led to a bottom. That means, since I assumed something in line 5 and got a bottom, that in fact the opposite is true, the opposite of line, uh, of line 5, which, and therefore, I now have B and C. Alright, well, let me just grab B, and let me also grab C, and note that C uh, is one of the things I needed down here, so I'm half done. Uh, what can I do with B? Well, with B I can OR on an A, and now I have the antecedent to uh, line 3. Therefore, by modus ponens, I get uh, D or E. And you know what? It's got to be D, because 
Um, and there are two ways to do this, I suppose. Maybe the most straightforward way is to say, okay, look, if D is false, then none of this is going to work. Because if D is false, now I will do a proof by cases on line 18. Well, then D leads to a contradiction. Um, but also uh, E certainly leads to a contradiction because of um, E and not E. So that's a bottom. So since both cases led to a bottom, that means uh, not not D, uh, which means uh, D, and then I'm done. Okay, that was really fast, but actually, you know, too fast maybe to keep up with me uh, if you're also writing, but not so fast to, to follow. Uh, in fact, it's maybe even kind of kind of slow or something. I'll annotate because I'm just going to be a good teacher. Uh, this bottom intro uh, came from line 7. This end intro came from 9 and 5. Uh, this bottom intro came from 10. And this line 12 is a proof by cases. So or elem, specifically uh, this A and B or C were the two halves of line 1. So I started with that disjunction in line 1. And I did a proof 6 through 8, and I did a proof 9 through 11, and they both led to the same thing, bottom. Well, now in line 5, I assume something and I reach the bottom. Therefore, by negation intro uh, 5 through 12, I assume something and I got a bottom, so I conclude the negation of it. And then negation elim, which really is a separate step. Uh, on line 13, which says that, um, you know, not, 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 not x is x. Uh, let me grab the b off of here, uh, off of line 14, and I'll grab the b off of line 14 again. Uh, now, this line 17 comes from oring on uh, a, a to the left of line 15. D or E comes from applying modus ponens to 17 and 3. Uh, now I start a proof by contradiction, and within that, a proof by cases using line 18. So this is an intro uh, 2019, bottom intro 21. This is me assuming the other half of line 18. And now, ending it together with the one uh, big premise I didn't use that, which is line 2. So that's 23 and 2. Um, that's negation intro 24. And once again, I did a proof by cases on line 18. I uh, started with line 18, and I eliminated line 18 in the sense that I showed that on the one, if the one hand D led to a bottom, and on the other hand, E also leads to a bottom, then therefore bottom. Finally, uh, I uh, assumed something uh, up here in line 19, and I got a bottom. So 19 through 26 was like a proof by contradiction, which ends with not not E, then negation E, lim 27, and finally I end together 16 and 28. Okay, Woo. good. Uh, two more, and that's it. Uh, proof 28, yeah. Woo. We do it. Um, this one is, I don't know, relatively hard maybe? Uh, I'm not sure, I kind of don't remember what's hard and what isn't. I think this is kind of hard. Um, not, still not as hard as, as, as number 14, but okay. Uh, what are we trying to do? Um, we are trying to prove uh, that P arrow Q really is the same thing as just not P or Q. Okay, I like this one because it involves sort of all of the major connectives. Um, not and, but you know, we don't, we don't need and. Uh, plus that one's not very interesting. Okay, uh, let's go. 
Uh, I hope you appreciate that this is really just two proofs. I think I can, I think I can get about 30 lines on one of these boards. So if I write really small, so uh, I'll just keep doing that. I think it's good. So, uh, all right, uh, proof with no assumptions. What shall I do? I shall, let's see, what's the midpoint? Maybe there or so, uh, something like that. And we got a little bit of this. And what I hope to get way down here is P arrow Q, if and only if not P or Q. Uh, how do I prove a biconditional? There is a way. The way is that you assume uh, P arrow Q and you try to prove um, uh, not P or Q. And then you turn around immediately and assume not P or Q and try to prove uh, P arrow Q. Can I can't remember which one of these is necessarily you know more difficult if, if either of them is. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, put this down. All right. Uh, well, I need to prove this disjunction. Once again, I find myself in this situation where. To prove, I see what's happening. To prove a disjunction, uh, the simplest thing I could hope for, possibly, maybe, is to prove uh, one of them an or on the other. So I might hope naively to, for example, prove not p. Well, that is equivalent to asking yourself, is this argument valid? And it just isn't. Uh, I cannot conclude from the truth of a conditional that the antecedent is false. Uh, in fact, the sort of normal way, so to speak, in which a conditional uh, is true is in which the antecedent is true and the consequent is true. Uh, and so this argument is in general invalid because it's possible for P R Q to be true if they're both true, uh, whereas um, then not P would be false. Uh, so since this argument is invalid, we are not going to be able to prove uh, not P uh, from P R Q. And on the other hand, uh, this argument is not valid either uh, because you can't uh, conclude from the truth of a conditional that the consequent is true. For example, the conditional might be vacuously true, which is to say that um, uh, P could be uh, ah, P could be false and Q could also be false. And therefore, this uh, conditional would, I should use a different color, this conditional would therefore be, would therefore be true, but uh, then the, the, the conclusion of the argument would be false. Okay, so this is why I wanted you all to become sort of savants at propositional logic so that you could sort of like extremely quickly, like some kind of chess master considering 20 different moves, you know, in, in 10 seconds, uh, you are going to consider all these sorts of things and realize, well, no, of course this is not going to work. Uh, which is to say that uh, neither of these disjuncts is alone provable from if P then Q. And therefore, I am not going to be able to prove function uh, by proving one of the disjuncts alone, and therefore there's only a, one other way, which is proof by contradiction on the entire disjunction. So you have to know all of that and see all of that uh, to know that that's just what we have to do. So, in line two, I shall suppose that it's not the case that not P or Q, and uh, what is going to happen is I'm going to get a bottom, and then I'm going to conclude not, not, uh, not P or Q, and then I will eliminate the, the double negation, and, and I'll be done. Okay, so, uh, having now committed to that as being my general strategy, I still have some work to do because, well, I have line one, which, okay, it's a conditional. What is the sort of destiny of any conditional? Well, it's to be combined with P. Uh, in fact, sort of deep down, you should sort of feel that the only way you ever really use a conditional is by having the antecedent and then getting the consequent. Uh, and this is just a negation. Well, the only way I ever get a negation is to, uh, the only way I ever use a negation, rather, is to construct a contradiction. And so if my goal is contradiction, 
then I feel very strongly that the particular contradiction I'm going to get is going to be a contradiction with 2 and the negation of 2. Which is to say, I sort of know that um, I'm going to kind of prove not P or Q, and then I'm going to end that together with not, not P or Q. I, I write that because uh, sort of ending line 2 together with uh, with the with the first half here is sort of the only way I'm ever going to use line two. Okay, this is the, maybe the first important thing that's happened in, in this whole video today uh, is this conversation right now, right? The destiny of line two is to be stuck together with with not P or Q to make this contradiction that I want. So that focuses my attention here now. What do I? Do? How am I going to prove this? Uh, well, uh, now I think I see that actually even just. Um, well, okay, here we go. Uh, I guess I just start, uh, I guess I just kind of start or something. Uh, because now, okay, I have line two, so, uh, let's see, where, where, what should I do first? Um, well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's something like this. I now, okay, I'll, I'll just do something, and then I'll explain why that was the thing to do. Uh, you just kind of do almost anything now. For example, P. Okay, well, uh, why, why P? Well, in some ways, at some point, I need a P, because it's the only way I'm ever going to get anything out of line 1. And, alright, well, this P together with line 1 gives me Q, but now this Q is a problem, because uh, this Q can be combined with not P, and that is a contradiction with line 2. Um, I think there are some sort of deep things to say here, um, if you're tracking sort of everything that's going on, uh, okay, well, just to finish this off then, uh, I get a bottom, I'm kind of going on autopilot because I'm so experienced, but now here in line 8, I get a not P, and now I have my line 9. Okay, so, um, how was I sort of, you might ask, suddenly allowed to, uh, have uh, well, how is I suddenly allowed to prove not P or Q? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> um, when I couldn't sort of before, it's because I had used this line too kind of again. Alright, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so what, what's happening here? I gotta wrap this video up. This is arrow elim 1, 3, gets me this line Q. I now OR intro on to that Q in line line 4 and not P, now that is a problem because I can end together 5 and 2. And it's my, it's my sort of assumption of line 2 which enabled me to prove, you know, within that assumption I can prove not P. In fact, I can prove anything because these two are contradictory. Uh, okay, this is bottom intro, um, line 6. Well, okay, I assume something in line 3 it turned out to lead to a contradiction, so negation intro 3 through 7. Uh, now I uh, OR on to that not P of the Q, so OR intro 8. I AND together um, line 9 and line 2, and finally I got the bottom that I wanted, bottom intro 10. The whole point of that was that, therefore, my assumption in line 2 was wrong, uh, and now we have a negation intro 2 through 11, and finally, finally, I eliminate the double negation from line 12. Alright, so that was pretty hard, I guess, actually. Um, that was the hardest one we've done, I think, today. Let's do the other case. I think the other case is maybe, maybe also tricky, I, I don't remember, um, but uh, at least I know what to do first, because um, here I am down here with this conditional to prove, and uh, yeah, there's only really one good way to prove a conditional. So that tells me that, um, that, that, that gives me some sort of clarity of what I should be doing. I should definitely be assuming P and hoping for Q. Okay, and well, how am I going to prove uh, Q? Um, well, uh, now it's almost like I'm doing another kind of disjunctive syllogism sort of inside here. Maybe this isn't so hard. 
Uh, I think the most straightforward way to prove Q is, again, by contradiction. No, you know what? I can just do a proof by cases directly on line 14. Because there are two options in line 14. Look, there's the option Q, okay, great. Or there's the option not P, well, that's impossible. So if I do it this way, it's going to get a little interesting. Uh, I can't guarantee that this is actually the most efficient way line-wise, but anyway, this will be fun. I'm going to just dive right in to the proof by cases. So I'll assume on the one hand, not P. And what I want to get out of all this is Q. Why do I want to get a Q out of this? Because on the other hand, uh, if Q, then I can just immediately read Q and, I'm, and then I'm done. So how am I going to get this Q? Well, by contradiction. So this will assume, here I will assume not Q, and, uh, and that will lead to a contradiction, therefore not not Q, therefore Q. Okay, so this is somehow kind of not that hard, but on the other hand, you know, it is somewhat cognitively uh, demanding to imagine us sort of making four consecutive assumptions. Each assumption opens up like a new sub-argument. Uh, and, uh, okay, let's, let's do it. Uh, I think um, here in possession of 15 and 16, well, you just and them together. So that's and intro 15, 16. Uh, then I just right away get my bottom that I want. Um, and uh, then I'm done, because I assume something in line 17, and it led to a bottom, so those, that was just a little three-line proof that my assumption of not Q uh, was wrong, uh, and I eliminate the double negation, and here I am. In line 22, I'm now considering the other half of line 14, but here I just reiterate line 22, uh, because I, I sort of insist, based on the syntax of this proof system, that I conclude the same thing in both halves of my proof by cases. And then, uh, over here in 24, I have or elim, uh, I started with this proof in line 14, uh, this, this disjunction rather, in line 14, and in 16 through 21, uh, I showed that my left disjunct led to Q, and in 22 through 23, I showed that my right disjunct led to Q. Therefore, I'm entitled to Q. In line 25, I s assumed uh, way back in 15, uh, P, and I got uh, Q out of that, so there it is. And then this whole thing turns out Let's see, on my answer key I did it a little differently. So this, this actually is the more efficient way, you know, by one line uh, over the other uh, thing I was, I, was, I was thinking. But, okay, uh, what is this? This is going to be by conditional intro 1 through 13 and 14 through 25. Alright, so if you're getting these kind of, kind of uh, fluently, then, I mean, that means I guess you're, you're getting really good, because uh, what, what is actually happening here? I mean, this is, this is a proof by contradiction, inside of a proof by cases, inside of a conditional proof, uh, inside of sort of another conditional proof, essentially, or inside of a half of a biconditional proof. So you, you really are sort of like uh, in a proof, inside a subproof, inside a subproof, inside a subproof, in, inside a bigger proof, and yet, if you sort of keep it all straight, uh, it, all, it all kind of works out. All right, uh, one more, I guess. Uh, this is the last one. I think this one is not that hard. Um, uh, so I think, I think this was the hardest one, maybe, this proof 28. Whew. From this batch. Uh, okay. Proof uh, number 29. Let's go. Uh, this is the proof of the sort of law of contraposition. In other words, what we're just going to show is that if P then Q is true, if and only if, uh, not Q arrow not P. Okay, uh, I think this is not so hard. Uh, let's, let's just begin. So, okay, once again, uh, I have this sort of uh, main proof with no assumptions. Down here I shall conclude. Yeah. 
Yeah, do you want to come up and join the video? I know, I want to. Okay, good. I'll be down in a couple minutes. Okay, here we go. <laughs> gotta do, uh, we gotta do this. How? It's really two proofs in one. Uh, it's, uh, and they're both uh, pretty straightforward, I think. Um, here, I shall assume P arrow Q, and I shall conclude not Q arrow not P. And then I will turn around immediately and say, okay, well, uh, not Q arrow not P, that's going to imply uh, P arrow Q, and then, uh, then I'll be done. Okay, uh, how do I do this? Well, again, I don't even need to think because this is a conditional. There's only one good way to prove a conditional. That is conditional proof. So in line two, I shall assume not Q, uh, and I shall aim for uh, not P. Oh, I wonder how I should prove not P. Still just like not even thinking yet, I say, okay, I'm just going to assume P and hope for a contradiction. And the contradiction just comes immediately because three together with one, I'm going to just do this one as fast as I can and not even annotate and then go away. Uh, three together with one gives me Q, but uh, this gives me Q and not Q, and so that's a contradiction. So uh, line seven is the result, and there it is. Okay, now, how about the other uh, half of things? Well, uh, now I want P arrow Q. So once again, without even thinking about what I want, I shall know that I just am going to assume P and aim for Q. Uh, well, how am I going to get that Q? Well, I guess I'm going to do it by contradiction. Uh, it must be Q, because if not, um, then not Q. But that can't be, because not Q together with line 9 gives me not P, but now I have P and not P, and that is a contradiction. And therefore, um, I have not not Q, and so I have Q, and so I think I must have missed the line. Uh, no! Uh, and, okay, there it is. All right. Super fast version, because I gotta go. Uh, no annotations, not even time to talk, but I think that one's pretty easy. Good, hopefully we're getting really good at this. Uh, see you next week.